Hello, my name is Sergeant Parker with Charlie Company 252. Today we're going to be doing a class on range estimation using mil dot reticles and the M150 ACOG. Just for this, these purposes, range estimation is using hash marks or mils on a mil dot optic reticle and known estimated measurements on the target to determine distance. Before we get into that, this is going to be maybe a little too much, but I just wanted to give the definition of what a mil comes from, how we get the word mils. A mil is a mil radian, uh, is defined as one one thousandth of a radian. Um, as you can see on the, on the right side of the screen there, kind of shows you how we get a radian uh, versus radius, arc length, things like that. Uh, one mil equals the width or height of one meter at a thousand meters. And there are 6,400 mils in a circle. Uh, and that's NATO mills. So uh, other countries or other organizations may use different mill calculations because the actual calculation is 6283.185, which is way too much to try to remember. So 6400 for our purposes is what we're going to use. Um, it's easy to use. It's easy to calculate with. And there are eight mills in one degree. So um, mills are gonna be more of your fine tune adjustments for call for fire and long range surveillance things. Whereas uh, degrees you're gonna use for more um, shooting azimuths and walking with a compass because trying to maintain 500 and you know, 5,400 mils while walking is, is just gonna be impossible. So we need a smaller unit of measurement for that. Um, and the relation to width to dis distance is gonna be constant. So um, Objects is pretty simple, but objects are going to be, when they're bigger, they're closer. And when they're farther away, uh, they're going to be smaller. And then that arc and that, those lines and how we measure mills is going to be constant carried out to the distance. Uh, the formula we're going to use uh, for mill to distance conversion, there are a lot of ways to skin the cat, so to speak. Um, we have minute of angle. Um, we can use mills using inches. We can use mills using centimeters. Um, but for us, and to keep things a little bit simpler, we're just going to use meters. So dividing uh, a larger object or a smaller object into a um, degree of a meter, right? Um, so the formula is the width or the height uh, in meters divided by the mils that you see on your measuring piece of equipment, the, uh, the, the reticle that you're using. Um, and that's going to get range, and you're going to take that number and times it by 1,000. Um, and we've got an example here. Uh, a tank flank is 5.5 meters wide. Uh, when looking through a mil dot reticle, you see that the tank is 10 mils wide. So 5.5 is divided by 10, which gets you 0.55. You need to use a calculator most of the time for that. Then you would multiply that by 1,000. So you would end up getting 550 meters. Uh, this is an example of the M22 uh, binocular reticle, which is pretty commonly carried for Bradley commanders and squad leaders in a mechanized infantry company. Um, as you'll notice, each hash mark is measured in 10 mils. So in between the one and two, for instance, is going to be a five mil hash mark. Uh, so we would measure it as, you know, um, 10 mils, 15 mils, 20. Um, and they just do that um, just not to clog up the reticle so you're not having a lot of stuff going on, a lot of information that's actually blocking your field of view uh, from seeing the, uh, the thing you're trying to look at. <clears throat> uh, right here, I've listed some common items. Um, I've done the calculations. A lot of these things are measured in inches, feet, um, you know, centimeters, things like that. But uh, what we did in this example is we just did everything in, um, in meters. So... Uh, that's a very easy calculation to do. Um, you can pretty much type in Google conversion uh, inch to meter, centimeter to meter, uh, and, and then you can just type that right in and convert anything you're trying to measure or any common items you may have in your uh, in theater or in the, the battle space you're operating in. Um, but as you can see, semi-trailer, fire hydrant, pickup truck, 55-gallon container, um, you know, and, and so on are, the, are common items that we would see um, especially on a, in a mechanized infantry platoon in areas that we're operating in. Um, the last three examples there are going to be common armored or uh, light armored types that you would see during your simulator time uh, on the Bradley um, or targets that we would see during gunnery. So your BMP, tank, ZSU, uh, that category of vehicles is going to have about the same measurements width and length. Um, 
And just so you don't have to write all of this down, you can come back and take a screenshot uh, or write down what you want and pause the video now. Um, but I will have in the practical exercises here in a few moments, uh, I will have the measurements of the vehicles that we will be using. All right, so for these practical exercises, uh, if you wanna pause it right here, uh, what you're really gonna need is you need an NCO or a, a seasoned E4 in the room that understands this concept and can, that can help you through some of these calculations. Um, you're also, I'm gonna introduce spots where you can pause it so that you can pause, work through it, make sure you have the right answers, uh, and then move forward. All right, our first example. Um, I couldn't put it on the center line, had some, uh, you know, some complications with technology, so I'm using the one to two line, um, but we know from the M22 bino reticle, uh, that is actually a 10 mil uh, measurement. So you can see the flank is going to, uh, the flank of the um, BMP is going to be a constant at 5.5 meters. So I'll go ahead and uh, stop here for five seconds and allow you to go ahead and work that in the classroom. All right, the next example here, uh, flank is still the same size. It's still a BMP, but remember we talked about being constant. Now it's just farther away. Uh, so you can take the five seconds and uh, go ahead and work through this exercise. All right, and now we are coming to personnel. Um, we're using the same measurements. Uh, we're still using width. Um, it might be a little bit tough to see here, but we're going to go ahead and go with five mils for uh, the measurement. Uh, I'm really measuring from like the shoulders right here, not the edge of the arms, um, but width is 0.5 meters. All right, last one. Uh, the length of this technical truck is 4.7 meters. Uh, we're going ahead and starting it from the uh, the one and a half or the 15 mil line uh, to carrying it all the way to the three. All right, I hope everybody had time to really work through those and uh, fully understand it. If you didn't, let's go ahead and pause here, make sure that we really understand that mil uh, conversion formula and how to use it. Um, I understand you're not gonna know the meters of every object you encounter, but as long as we know the formula, we can get that information. All right, and we're gonna move right now to the M150 ACOG for range estimation. Uh, the M22, well, let me pause there. The IBAS on the Bradley is probably gonna be the most accurate and easily readily available thing for a mechanized uh, infantry company to, uh, to measure distance. But um, we're, we don't always carry those around and we don't always have the Bradleys with us. So um, when you're talking about your dismounts, you've got your M150 and you've got your M22. Those are two extremely useful pieces of equipment that you can use to measure and uh, estimate range. So we're going to talk about the M150 right now, uh, specifically the ACOG. Uh, the ACOG is another tool we have readily available to make quick and accurate range estimations using both mill reference lines and the center reticle. And I'll talk about both of those because we're actually kind of combining a little bit of different doctrines here. Uh, the center line reticle, the ACOG site, the entire reticle pattern is a bullet drop comp compensator designed to compensate for the trajectory of the 5.56 millimeter round from 100 to 800 meters without making mechanical adjustments to the sites. Um, and we'll just talk through this really quickly because on the next slide it'll show in a little bit more detail. But as you can see, um, you may not be able to see the bottom right corner, um, but it's showing the 800 meter target. But each one of those stadia lines um, side to side is the width of a human. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, so the ranging feature is what they call that. The base of the chevron and the horizontal stadia lines below the chevron represent 19 inches at indicated range. The 19 inches is the average width of a man's shoulder. Range your target using the base of the chevron for 300 meters and the width of the horizontal stadia lines for four to 800. Um, so basically to walk through this, if you're looking at the triangle, the base of that, if you put that on the shoulders and it touches both shoulders and that person fits right inside there, they're at 300 meters. And then basically moving on, raising your sight up a little bit. And if you, you know, let's say that the, the person you're trying, you're looking through at the bottom of the triangle and it's extending past them. So you raise the side up a little bit and you find the line that corresponds with the edge of their shoulders. 
and then you can measure four, five, six, seven, eight hundred with the ACOG. Uh, and that's a really quick way of doing it. Uh, I know we're using inches instead of meters, but this is really just specifically for uh, you know enemy combatant acquisition rather than really taking the time to measure out vehicles and estimate range. This is quick in a hurry, like I see them, how far are we from moving forward? Uh, and in this example, the lines are positioned at the edges of the combatant shoulders for the 500 meter line on the ACOG. So the soldier is 500 meters away. Uh, pretty self-explanatory, we just talked about it, but I wanted to show you kind of what it would look like. Uh, but yeah, this is how you would measure how far a person is. Um, obviously, not everybody's gonna be standing at 100 meter increments. Uh, there's no lines drawn out there for people to stand. So use your best estimate. Um, as you can see here, with those lines positioned on the 500, if you shot all the way up to 550, you're still hitting center mass. You're still hitting the torso. So you basically, you know, you can just put it on there, make a good estimation, and maybe do a little Kentucky windage if needed. Um, the ACOG reticle also uses mill reference lines off to the left and the right. Sometimes they get a little fuzzy out towards the edges just because of how we had to maintain our sight picture. But at least the first two sets, um, the 10 mil increments, so about 20 mils, is going to be pretty easily identifiable. Uh, using the mil reference lines on the ACOG, we can estimate range of the BMP. Using the same formula as before, nothing's changed. They're still in 10 mil increments, same as the M22. We know that the BMP is still 5.5 meters long on the flank. We also know that it is measuring 15 mils in our reticle. 5.5 meters divided by 15 mils is, three, is 0.367. If we multiply by 1,000, the distance is 367 meters away. So you'd use the same exact formula as you did on the M22 as you would in the ACOG. Having this tool readily available makes it really easy to move from uh, acquiring the range on uh, an enemy combatant and moving to vehicles. Uh, and pretty, do it pretty interchangeably, whatever is the easiest thing for you to measure. All right, I know up to this point, everybody's thinking, I'm not carrying a calculator on me at all times. I've already got enough stuff. I'm grenadier, I've got all these grenades. I'm a you know, 240 gunner, I'm a 249 gunner. I've got all this stuff on me. Uh, and yes, at having you carry a calculator may not be realistic. Maybe one in the squad, maybe that's a pretty good idea. But what we can do though, is make known enemy quick reference guides. So you could go through and find items in your battle space that you know are common items. Maybe the 55 gallon drum, uh, maybe it's a Toyota Hiluxes. Um, you know, maybe it's a certain type of vehicle that you know, they only have in this area and, and you know you're gonna encounter a lot of them. So depending on the known enemy type of enemy, uh, sorry, depending on the known type of enemy you are encountering, you can make a cheat sheet for quick range estimations. This eliminates the need for carrying a calculator uh, on you for OP operations. If the enemy is operating out of primarily technical trucks, in this example, we can make a quick reference table of mills to distances. Now, some of these distances are gonna be a little unrealistic. At 56 meters on the bottom right there, uh, you better be shooting, not measuring, all right? But if we know the, the, known, the known measurement is the flank in the front, if we know those, um, measurements already, uh, we can say, okay, well, uh, I've got all these mill lines on my M22, so I can measure from 10 to 30 right here. Um, and if I see, if I'm seeing 10 mils in my M22 or on my ACOG, and I know the flank is 4.7 meters, then it's 470 meters. And then you can carry that all the way across on your sheet. So uh, team leaders, squad leaders, you can start building out at least maybe a few different items that you can estimate off of. Um, you know, you don't need to have everything in your battle space, but uh, if you know the width of a truck or if you know the length of a truck, then you can probably estimate some other distances based on that if it's driving by things or if it's parked by things. So just get smart and come up with maybe five different examples and, you know, make a little chart of mills out to, you know, uh, you know 10 different mill uh, measurements. So that way you can use it as a quick reference guide to say, hey, I think they're about here. Um, calling for fire, for instance, you don't need to be hitting them on the meter. You need to be hitting them within, you know, 100 meters, uh, 50 meters. So uh, this is a really good way of making fairly accurate measurements very quickly. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and stop for questions. Um, I won't obviously be answering this because it's a video, but 
look to that team leader, look to that senior E4 that's right there, uh, or look to your, your neighbor that really understood the concept, maybe if you have a few questions, or be thinking of ways and questions of how to implement this, things that you already know we need to take measurements of, things that you already wanna make a book, uh, and then start making that smart book for your squad.